Hi guys, in today's how-to video, I want to explain the most common types of pistol jams in IPSC and USPSA and how to solve them efficiently. Obviously, there's a wide variety of pistol jams that we might encounter in training and competition. I've selected six based on my own experience and analysis from other YouTube videos. Before I go into the actual pistol jams, I want to go over two very important fundamentals as far as solving pistol jams. The first is if you're shooting, make sure that your finger is off the trigger, either up in the air as shown or against the frame. The second is bring the gun in closer to your body on eye level so you have full control and full sight on your uh, entire gun and including the magazine. So you can identify what's going on and then select the best course of action to solve it, to continue your training or your match stage. The first pistol jam I want to discuss is not really a, uh, a pistol jam. It's a situation whereby um, at the starting position, the instructions are to load a magazine, but not charge around into the chamber and holster. And what you see a lot of shooters do is they will, at the beep, they will grab their gun, they will point at the target, they will press the trigger and nothing happens. Now, in scenarios like this, there are basically two things you can do. Um, either the mag is not seated correctly, so you will tap, rack, to then continue, or if you really want to save a little more time, um, some tenths of a second, you're not gonna tap, you're just gonna rack to then continue to shoot the stage. The second jam I want to discuss is a bad primer or a light primer strike. So you're on the stage shooting and suddenly you press the trigger and nothing happens. This is important. No, pff, no light cycling of the gun nothing happens. Now, in a situation like this, you slightly turn the gun, you rack, and you continue. Why are you not tap racking? Because you were shooting and you had a correct feet. So, tapping and then racking, for example, as I would do in a more tactical uh, environment, is again, you lose um, tenths of a second, which is important on the entire stage, especially if it's a short stage, for example. The third jam I want to discuss is called uh, bulged ammo. Uh, this occurs especially for people that reload their ammo, and it looks like this. Actually, the slide doesn't fully close because of a um, bulge on the case, which prevents it from fully entering into the barrel. There are actually three ways to solve a jam with bulged ammo. What you see many shooters do is they will actually tap the rear of the slide or if you have an open gun, your wrecker, so that the slide forces the round into the chamber. And then you can continue. Another option is if you have if you have a situation like this is not to force the round into the chamber, but actually to rack the slide to load a fresh round into the chamber to continue. In worst case scenario, your round is so large in the barrel that tapping the slide or racking the slide is not gonna work anymore. In very rare uh, situations like this, I strongly recommend to ditch the uh, magazine for production and um, production optics shooters make sure that you firmly grab the front of the of the grip and that with your strong hand you will actually tap underneath the uh, beaver tail to use more force to get the round out of the um, the chamber or for open shooters i will actually grab the uh, racker and the rear of the slide and do the same. Use force to actually get the round out of the chamber. And once it's out of the chamber, grab a new mag, load, rack, and continue. I've actually seen um, production and open shooters 
leave the original Mac in the gun um, and grabbing the slide to actually hit the, um, the grip or grab it for open shooters, grab it and the rear to actually get the round out and then continue to shoot. Um, this is completely based on your own uh, skill level and uh, especially your risk uh, award analysis. This, uh, the fourth gem I want to discuss is called a double feed and looks like this. There's an empty case which was not ejected correctly or an actual round in the chamber and there's another round that follows immediately behind it causing your slide to block. In competition, there are actually three ways to solve a double feat. The first, the easiest and the quickest, but also with the highest potential of a second jam, is just pull out the Mac slightly, rack it back in, and then continue to shoot. This is the quickest way to solve a double feat. The risk is that if there's no live round in the chamber, but actually an empty case, you're gonna have a second jam, again, losing time. The second solution is to slightly take out the slide, tap it in, racking the gun, and continuing. This makes sure that your uh, mag is seated correctly and that you do not take any chances with an empty case in the chamber. And maybe, yes, you drop a live round, but you have a new fresh round in the chamber. The third option to solve this um, double feed is pulling out the gun, not dropping, because in a double feed, if you just press the uh, Mac release, the Mac will not drop automatically because it's stopped by the round that also wants to follow into the chamber. So you have to actually physically take it out, drop it, rack, Enter a new magazine, rack, and then continue. This will actually take the most time uh, to solve a double feed, but it's uh, an option. The fifth jam I want to discuss is called a stovepipe, where an empty case is not ejected correctly and it gets stuck between the barrel and the slide. Might be on the side or it might be on top of the gun. If you recognize a situation like this, especially for uh, production and carry optics and, and single stack shooters, they can actually go over the uh, case and actually take it out like this to then continue. Or they can choose, as many open shooters will actually do if they see that, just rack the slide slightly tilt the gun sideways, so gravity actually assists us, rack to then continue. The sixth and final jam I want to discuss is actually the worst one, which I wish onto nobody. Um, it's called a script load. And again, script loads occur more frequently with people that reload their ammo than with shooters that use uh, factory ammunition. So what is a script load? A script load is a situation whereby a round is uh, in the, uh, the barrel, you actually fire, and contrary to the second jam I discussed, the uh, bad ammo um, or light uh, primer strike, where nothing happens, no, pff, no cycling, no nothing, in a script load, the primer will actually go off, but um, due to too little or no powder in the, um, in the case, the uh, pressure is built up enough to push the bullet into the barrel. Now, there are two options. If you're very lucky, the bullet doesn't travel far enough into the barrel for another round to cycle into the chamber. It actually gets stuck really in the beginning of the barrel. This will actually prevent another round from entering into the barrel. And you can do tap rack, you can do whatever you want. It will not go into the um, barrel. So this is the most advantageous um, script load. 
If you're really in uh, bad luck and the bullet sits further away in the middle or maybe even at the end of the barrel, and this actually leaves room for the next round to, um, to charge into the barrel and you press the trigger, the bullet of the uh, round in the chamber will hit the bullet blocked in the barrel and your gun will actually explode. And fragments will actually fly around, hitting you, hitting the arrow, or hitting other people in the vicinity of the uh, stage. That's really the worst situation and the worst pistol jam that you can encounter. Now, how do you recognize a, uh, a script load? There are two important uh, warning signs. The first is you will hear oftentimes the primer go off. So contrary to a light primer strike where nothing happens um, in a script load, especially if there's uh, little to no powder in the case, the, um, the round will actually go off and you will hear not a bang as you would normally hear when you fire uh, a gun and a round in the chamber, but it will be more a pfft. It will be very minimal, but you will still be able to hear it. And also, you will feel that the gun is trying to cycle, but due to the fact that there's not enough pressure, it will not cycle fully or completely. So these are the two most important warning signs, the, pff, the small pop and the fact that your gun will barely cycle um, to actually load the next round. If you have um, these warning signs come up, you really have to stop anything you're doing, regardless of being on a training stage or on a match uh, stage. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you have to stop whatever you're doing and you have to call out to the RO who will come over and you can explain that you think that you have a script load. He will take the necessary actions to make sure the gun is safe by removing the, um, the magazine and also making sure that there's no round in the chamber and then you can actually go to the, um, to the safety area where you can investigate what's going on on the safe uh, circumstances and use a, uh, a script rod to push the, um, the lodged bullet out of the barrel without damaging your gun. Yes, if it's during a match stage, you will have a zero stage, but a zero stage is still 1000 times better than getting injured yourself, injuring other people like the arrow, and blowing your gun up, making it completely useless. It's gonna be a total loss. You have to realize that pistol jams are always unforeseen. You do not plan a uh, pistol jam during your training or your competition stages. So it will always be unforeseen. Unforeseen means that you will lose time. That's a fact of life. You might lose between two to maybe even six seconds identifying and solving the, um, the pistol jam itself. Um, the loss of time is a fact of life. It's important to maintain your positive um, attitude towards the ma match, towards the stage, not to let your, ha your head hang down, not to give up, but actually identify, solve and continue your stage plan as you uh, planned it uh, before the pistol jam itself. So pistol jams is something that is also rarely uh, practiced, um, especially in dry fire uh, situations. Um, as I've shown here in my dry fire area, you can safely practice a lot of pistol jams. So you actually recognize what's going on. You imprint the image of a double feed, of a stovepipe, or maybe even you enact a script load that um, you imprint that onto your conscious mind. It goes into your subconscious mind, so you can uh, identify it quickly and solve it as quickly as possible, reducing the loss of time. And again, you will...